Did I say Norma? Janie? What um, are the Vanguards are? I'm sorry, I, I was asking what are the augmented leads? The AVR, the AVL, and the AVF. Very good. Yes, that's correct. And lastly, which ones are the chest leads? V1 through V6. Very good. That's correct. Very good. V1 through V6, and they go right here, right? They have certain uh, areas where you're going to be placing those those electrodes, right? The stickies, uh, they have certain parts of the, of the body. We have uh, some landmarks that you have to be familiar with. We have the sternum or breastbone, which starts here and then goes right to all the way to shoulder. Same thing on this side. So we have to know the landmark on your left side, right in the middle of the, 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 the this collarbone, we call it the clavicle. So you go down about the middle, this is called the mid clavicular, right, line, and you make a straight line down and you're gonna count four intercostal spaces. The little gaps between your, between your ribs, those are called intercostal spaces. So when you palpate with your fingers, you're gonna be able to palpate the different spaces in between. So you're gonna look for the fourth intercostal space and that's where you're gonna place uh, V2, right? I'm sorry, V3. So I'm sorry, let's go back. Let me rephrase. V1 is gonna go on the right side of the sternum, which is the breastbone right here, on the right side on the fourth intercostal space. That's where you put V1. And then V2 is gonna be right across it on the other side of the sternum. That's where you place V2. We're gonna skip V3 and we're gonna place V4, right? Mid clavicular line, fifth intercostal space. So about right here. Okay, so V5, V4 goes there. And then V3 will go around here, right in between, right in between this area. That's V3. So we got V1, V2, V3, and V4. And now V5 is gonna go in this anterior line right here where your, your axilla begins, right here. Same fifth intercostal space, but anterior, the midclavicular line. Now y'all can see the line right here. You can feel it. That's where V5 goes, right next to V4, V5. And then the last one is V6. It's gonna go mid axillary line, fifth intercostal space on the same line that V5 is. So we got four, five, and six around the same line. And that's how you find the landmarks for the chest leads, all right? V1 v, uh, through V6. And we also talked about the different views. We, we said that we have 10 electrodes, right? 10 wires that are giving us 12 views of the heart. What, what do they mean? It means that there's three augmented leads that are composed of different leads, right? So for example, AVR, AV right. We said it takes a look at the heart, right? AVR looks at the heart in this direction, okay? In this direction. So electricity flows from the SA node in this direction, right? At about, uh, say five o'clock. Not completely straight down, but this way. From the SA node, every cell in the heart starts to get um, depolarized, right? In that direction, in that direction, in that direction. But mostly, most of the energy is traveling this way, right? You have the Bachmux bundle, and then you have your AV node, and then you have the bundle of his, and then the signal splits into the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch, into the Purkinje fibers, and then deep into the, into the tissue, into the muscle tissue via the fascicles. The fascicles are the smallest wires, if you wanna call it that, or electro, electrical tissue that goes deep into the muscle. All right, so from the SA node through the Bachmann's bundle into the AV node, down um, into the bundle of his, which is a very small piece, and then down into the left and bo right bundle branches, Purkinje fibers, and then into the fascicles. Okay, so all this happens in less than one second. It takes about 0 0.6 seconds, right? Six tenths of a second for the electricity to flow. That means in less than one second, your heart has already made a contraction. All right, uninterrupted, without any problems, just like right now. Right now, your heart is sending impulses, sending impulses, and the muscle tissue responds in the same way. 
it takes up that electrical stimulation and the cells depolarize, right? Or de uh, repolarize and then depolarize, contract and re relax or reposition, re uh, recover. Let's use the word recover. I think it's a more appropriate word. So contract and recover and then contract and recover and so on, right? On average, we said that the heart rate's about, uh, beats about 70 beats per minute and we calculate cardiac output. Who remembers the formula for cardiac output? Try to remember that. CO or cardiac output equals 70 mLs times your heart rate. That's equals your cardiac output. Stroke volume is what how much blood your pump heart pumps out every with every stroke or every contraction, which is an average about 70 mLs. All right, moving on. So it's also important that you uh, understand what Einhoven's triangle is. We talked about it yesterday. Remember, Mr. Willem Einhoven, the one that actually invented the electrocardiograph. So the, he he uh, he um, discovered that electricity flows in specific directions. To be able to capture the electricity and be able to place the electrodes in the correct manner, you have to understand the flow of electricity in your chest area and your from your heart. Okay, so we put we say that lead one. Okay, lead one, which the electricity runs this way from the right this way. So you're actually looking at lead one from this direction. You're looking at the heart from the left side. If you if you are um, taking a picture of the heart and you're standing on my left side, you're looking at the heart this way. So which sections of the heart are you looking at? The left ventricles, the left atrium, a lot of this section, right? If you lead, lead two, we said the electricity flows from the right to the left, to the right again, right? I'm sorry, from right to the left in this direction, okay? All right, so if you're sitting over here, taking, uh, looking at the flow of direction coming at you, you're sitting over here, then you're looking at what? Mostly the left ventricle, the bottom of the heart, right? The inferior part of the heart, and this part of the heart. So this is lead two, okay? So we have Raquel looking at the heart this way, okay? And we have uh, Cynthia looking at the heart this way. And then in lead three, the uh, electricity, flow of electricity goes from the left arm to the left leg, right? From here, this way. So Norma is uh, standing in this direction, okay? You're looking also at the heart from the bottom side and more this way, okay? Bottom and this way. This is what you're looking at. So imagine 12 or 10, rather 10 cameras looking at the heart from every different direction, especially in the middle, right? People taking pictures of the heart in this direction, six pictures, six people, right? V1 through V6, looking at the heart right through it, right through it, right through the muscle. We have the septum here in the middle. Remember the septum is, all, is what divides the ventricles. We have this, this part right here called the septum, this part, okay. Divides the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So keep blood, you know, separated, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood separated. So V1 through V6 looks at all this inside, okay. Remember, we're trying to, to see if there's any interruption in the signal, which is what we call an arrhythmia. So if anything happens to the tissue, you know, at any point, is even if you have um, or anything interrupts your electricity, okay? It could be electrolytes, medications, uh, uh, tissue death, like in a heart attack and so on. It's going to cause an interruption in the signal and the flow from here to here. So you're gonna be detecting arrhythmias, okay? So again, make sure you understand what the standard leads are, which is one, two, and three, the augmented leads, AVR, AVL, and AVF, and then your chest leads, V1, three, six, know where to place them, very easy. Um, but again, you have to make sure that you understand that. And we talked about the machine. We talked about different settings that the machine has. The electrocardiograph has some settings that we can, uh, that we can manipulate, right, if needed. We talked about the different functions. The uh, machine only takes three, um, three signals at a time. It's called the multi-channel, just like the one we have uh, here in, in the facility and you'll be working on Friday. You... Um, you can watch the video that I have there, it's the link. It's exactly the same machine, exactly the same machine. So you watch the video, you'll be very familiar with the machine. Okay, so we talked about three different settings. We talked about the gain, 
the speed, the gain, and the speed of the um, of the machine that you can adjust. <clears throat> so the speed of the paper, we said that the usually the usual speed of the paper is about twelve millimeters per second. Twelve millimeters. That's the when you print something, the paper will go you know about twenty five millimeters per second, and it's going to create your EKG. Now. If somebody has a very fast heart rate, let's say their heart is going at about 50, 150 beats per minute. Okay, so the, the AKG would normally mark one, two, three, four, like that, right? Now, if somebody's having a very fast heart rate, it, the AKG paper, you're gonna see one, two, three, they're gonna be right next to each other, all right? Now, don't think that the whole paper is gonna be filled with all these waveforms. You know, you have different sections because you have 12 views, so all the views have to fit. They have to fit in the paper. It's only six seconds. So what you can do is you can manipulate or change the speed of the paper. You can increase it to 50 millimeters per second, which will increase the speed of the paper and the markings will be a little bit separated. It makes it just a little bit easier for you to evaluate an EKG rhythm. It could be completely normal or it can be completely wrong. So it's a, it can make a big difference. We also talked about the, um, the gain, which is another setting that you can uh, manipulate. The gain is used to increase or decrease the size of the AKG. So you have your P wave and then your R wave, S and then your T wave. Sometimes they come out really high for some reason. They come out really tall and you're like, it's, the, it's going out of the paper. You can decrease that setting down, decrease it or increase it by default. The machine is set to 10 millivolts, millimeters or millivolts, okay? That each little square is one millimeter, one millimeter square. So you can decrease it to five millimeters or increase it to 15 to 25 uh, millimeters if necessary to make that little wave taller or smaller, depending on, on the needs. Remember that every time you make a change on the settings of the machine, you have to document or tell the doctor or the nurse who's in charge of the patient that you made a change in the um, in the setting. Very, very important. Otherwise, uh, you know, you, they may misinterpret the AKG. The last uh, setting we can manipulate is also uh, the artifact filter. Now artifact is uh, electrical noise. Right now, through the, the walls of your house, there's cables that are running to feed your electricity. All that little electricity makes noise, but you can't hear it but the machine can detect it. Remember, just like it, it can detect electricity coming out of our bodies, we can also pick up some artifact or noise, electrical noise from the, from the walls, from uh, devices like your phones or other electrical devices. Or sometimes the patients may start to shiver. Maybe they're cold or nervous and they're still shivering. All that can cause artifact, all right? And when you, when you print out your EKG, you're gonna notice that it's very, strange looking. Sometimes uh, it's um, illegible. You can't even evaluate it. You can't see what you're looking at. You can't tell. That's an, uh, a bad looking EKG. So you have to make sure that you print out a good looking EKG. All right. Now, so those are the three main uh, settings that you can manipulate your speed, the gain, and also the artifact, which can be measured in, mil in uh, millihertz. And you can adjust it to increase it means that you're going to decrease the amount of, um, of electrical uh, noise, you, you're making the machine less sensitive to electrical noise. So those are the three settings that you can manipulate. We talked about electrodes, which are the little um, stickies, right? Uh, they have the little metal part. We're gonna be using the ones that are disposable. They're a little rectangular ones that you can see on page uh, 68 in your book. And uh, those are for one-time EKG only. I say you're in a doctor's office and gonna do an EKG. Those are the ones they use for you. But if you're going, if you go to uh, to uh, the hospital and you're gonna be stay there for a while, they're gonna put uh, non disposable ones, non disposable electrodes. They're called silver electrodes. Those stay on there, can stay on there for a long time. They're much more durable and uh, they have more like a uh, like a snap on, like like a snap on connection. Uh, versus the ones that we use here for a one-time EKG, the more like they have like a little piece of paper sticking out and we use what we call alligator clips to just clip it on there. And then we obviously we take them off. We'll go into the actual, the actual procedure in the next chapter. We also discussed the paper, the graph paper. 
the paper that we use, there's two, two uh, types. There's the, um, the dot matrix, okay? The, it's a paper that has red lines, right? Going vertical and then in the and in horizontal. And then you the, in the middle, they have little tiny dots. Those are good quality uh, paper that we're gonna be using. And then you have your, your regular grid paper, which just, they're all squares. They're all little squares, right? We have the thick red lines going uh, vertically and also horizontally. So make sure that you understand what you're looking at. Now, the paper has a purpose. The purpose of it is for us to be able to measure and evaluate an EKG. So there's little, little boxes. On page 71, you can see an image, an illustration of, um, oh, by the way, can everybody see the, the PDF file that's online? Make sure that you're able to view it. If not, let me know so that I can, uh, I can share it with you. I could probably share it if you're not. Is everybody able to view the PDF file? Yes, all right, very good. Raquel, you can see it, excellent. So then we, we can, uh, Norma, were you able to view it? I know the other day you were having trouble with it. So in, in the paper, you're gonna see on page uh, 71, you see that there's uh, one that's highlighted in blue. Those are the small little squares. Each one of those little squares measures point, I'm sorry, we measure in time. In horizontal, it's time. Vertically, we measure millivolts. Okay, that's how we measure the height of the, of the waves. And horizontal is the length or duration of the waves. So when we look at it, each little square, it's 0 0.04 seconds. 0 0.04 seconds, it's one little square. So that means that five little squares equals point two seconds, two tenths of a second, okay? 0 0.04 is four hundredths of a second and 0 0.2 is two tenths of a second. Okay, so again, each little square, 0 0.04, if you multiply that times five, five little squares across and, and up, it's 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, it's two tenths of a second. It's a very, very short amount of time. So that's how we're gonna be measuring those, those waves, all right? So, when we, once we start looking at the individual waves, waveforms, you're gonna understand why it's time is very important. You, you remember we said P wave represents atrial depolarization. So we expect the signal of the essay node to travel to the left side, to the left atrium, right? From the right here, we expect it to travel to this side, to the left in less than how much? There's some, there's some um, uh, settings that we have to remember, right? Some measurements, right? It, it has to travel in less than 0 0.08 seconds. So that means about four little squares, four little squares. It has to travel in less than 0 0.08 seconds or less. Other than that, the signal's taking too long. Okay, so P wave represents atrial depolarization. Remember, atrial contraction. That's your P wave. So this is where the time com uh, comes in to be very important. When you measure that P wave and you see, remember that P wave, one half of the P wave represents right depolarization and the other half represents at left atrial depolarization. So when you evaluate the P wave, you're just not looking at nice and round. You're looking at the shape. Is it, is it peaked? Is it like this? or is it irregular or is it nice and round? And how long is it? How wide is it? Is it 0 0.04 seconds, two little squares? Is it 0 0.06 seconds, three little squares? How wide is that P wave? It's very important because if they don't contract and they're allowed time, then you're gonna have atrial problems, right? Atrial problems, atrial contraction. So let's move on. So now that you know the, how to measure the, the time, okay, in the little squares, we have to calculate, we have to calculate the speed of the heart rate. Okay, how fast is a heart going? Just by looking at the, um, just by looking at the paper, okay? So you have to, there's three methods that we're gonna discuss. Uh, if, you, if you can, please write it down so that way you can calculate it. 
So one of them is the R to R method. Remember the R wave is a tall peak wave, okay? R to R, that's one way, and we'll go into it in just a minute. And then you have your 1500 method. 1500 method, which is the most accurate, the most accurate for use with regular rhythms, regular rhythms, right? What's regular? We're gonna go into that in a bit. What is a regular rhythm? And then the last method we can also use is a six second, six seconds. So you have to count all the waves, all the R waves within a six second strip. So we said that four little squares, or I'm, I'm sorry, the little squares are 0 0.04. So five of them is 0.2 seconds, right? We, one little black grid or dark red grid is 0.2. That means it's five little squares. Five little squares is one second. I'm sorry, five big squares have one second. Five big squares are one second. So how many big squares are in six seconds? How many big squares are in six seconds? Can anybody respond to that? Type in your answer if you can figure it out. So how do you do the, um, the uh, R to R method? How do you figure out the R to R method? So if you look closely at the paper, let me see if I can share it with you. I should have an example of it. You can understand. Am I sharing this already? All right. Oops, I'm sharing the wrong one. Great. Has anybody figured it out yet? Let me know if you did. Anybody? I don't see anybody sharing. You guys are so quiet. Thirty. That would be correct, Janie. Thirty big boxes, thirty big squares are in six seconds. So what does that mean? It means that you have to count all the R waves between thirty boxes. But we're gonna make it a little easier for you. It's gonna make it a little easier. If you look closely, oops, look, let me show you this example. Oh, where, where, there it is. Can you all see this strip right here? Yes. Okay, you see this little red line right here? That darker? That's what we call the three second marker. So from here to here, you have 15 boxes and here to here, yeah, 15 boxes. So this should be 30 boxes. That means this, this is a second, six second strip. Okay, so if you count the R's in here, how many, these are the R waves, right? P? Four. Four. So what do you do when you use the, um, the um, R to R method, you're gonna count those and, I'm sorry, the six second method, you're gonna count those and multiply it times 10. And that's how you know how you can calculate using the six second method. Let's go back to the R to R method. Okay, the R- Count the little boxes? No, you're gonna count the R waves. One, two, three, four, and you multiply times 10. That's the six second method. That's the six second. I'm starting from the six second going back. The, we use this six second method to calculate irregular rhythms because sometimes you're gonna find that, you know, if you have calipers or even we use your fingers, if you put your fingers on the, on the 
where the little peaks are, the R to R. You put your fingers there and put it on the next one and then the next one, the next one. You're gonna notice that they're happening about the regular time, okay? That's what we call a regular rhythm. When the R's happen at exactly the same time, that's what we call a regular rhythm, okay? But we'll go into that later. So if you get, again, your two fingers and put them on each R, you notice that they happen about the same time and that's the way it should be. Now, if you have an R that happens, you know, randomly, it shows up there and you measure it and it's like, okay, this one's this wide and then the next one's wider, one's this close and the one's that wide and so on, that's an irregular rhythm. That is not, the R's are not happening at, at the regular rate they, like they should. So we have an irregular rhythm. So we use the six second method to calculate irregular rhythms, all right? Okay. Now there's another method that we can use. Let me see, I could probably enlarge this. How do you make them again? Nope. Oh yeah, here it is. All right, I made it bigger. I think y'all can see that right, right there. So R to R method means, it means you're gonna measure from here to here, but what are you gonna measure? What are you, how are you gonna calculate it? Well, what you're gonna do is you're going to, or the R to R method is also called the 300 method, okay? Why? Because you're gonna count the large boxes, the large boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Let's say it's seven, it's seven and a half, okay? So what are you gonna do with that? You're going to divide it into 300, into 300. So 300 divided by 7.5, what is that? Use your calculators and give me your answer. Go ahead and calculate it. Give me your answer, see who can read response faster. I'm waiting for y'all's response. Raquel, what's your answer? So what are we doing? We are dividing, right? The number of large boxes into 300. And that should give you the heart rate. You can do it in pencil or you can do it with your calculator. You wanna be more accurate. All right? Or if you wanna round up to eight, that's also fine. So somebody divided uh, 300 divided by eight and someone do um, seven, and that should give you a very good uh, close idea, right? Uh, it's two, it's uh, 14. Anybody, somebody said 37 and a half. What did you divide by Raquel? 300 divided by eight, okay, very good. So divided by um, 37 by 40, yeah, 40. So it's very close. It could be anywhere between 38 beats per minute up to 43 beats per minute. Between 38 to 43. You see how this is not very accurate method. Okay, R to R is not very accurate, but it can be used for regular rhythms. You have to have a regular rhythm like this one. All right, if, you, if it's irregular, it's not gonna work because you're gonna have like range in, you know, if you have another R right, right next to the, you know, right after the other one, it's not gonna work. So that's why we use a six second method with irregular uh, rhythms. So again, this is the R to R. Now you wanna go with the same one, okay? Now we, we call the um, the next method to, that's more precise, more accurate is the 1500 method, 1500 method. So using the same um, uh, example, we said there's about seven and a half, right? In each little box, I'm sorry, in each big box, we have five. So uh, look, count how many little boxes are between the two R's. So we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37 little boxes. 37 little boxes. Divide that into 1500. 
1,500 divided by 37. What does that give you? So anyone? Has anybody calculated? Is that your answer, Raquel? Is that your new answer or you haven't replied? What's your answer, Cynthia? What is your answer for the 1500 method? Again, we are counting the little squares from one R to the next R and dividing it into 1500. So type in your answer. I'm going to make this uh, a little smaller. We're going to move on to this one, to the next one. We talked about gain. We already talked about that. Electrodes. KG paper. Measurements. We are somewhere in here. There's your measurements. The heart rate, R to R method. Okay. This table that you see right here, uh, it's kind of give you an idea. Okay. Large boxes between two R waves. So there's one large box, right? That means that the R waves are very close. Okay. That means 0.2 seconds. So the heart rate is going at 300 per minute. That is very, very fast. And if there's two boxes, they're a little bit more separated. That means 0 0.04 and they're 150. So if you notice, they always go by, by uh, they're decreasing. The heart rate is decreasing as the R waves are separating. And here's the example of the R to R, counting the large squares and you divide them into 300. The 1500 method is the same thing, except you're counting the little squares, right? The teeny weeny squares and divide it into 1500. And then this is a six second, right? Look, here we have the three second marker. So from here to here is three seconds. That means there's 15 boxes, one five. And then from here to here, there's another 15 boxes. So what do you do? You count all the R's, one, two, three, and so on. And in the last one here, would be the R. The last one is eight. You multiply that times 10, and that will give you your heart rate. Again, this method is used for irregular rhythms. That means that the R's are not happening happening at the same time. How do you know they're not happening at the same time? Well, you can get some EKG calipers and place them on each R, and if they're not hitting on the same every single time, that means it's irregular. Okay. Don't worry about the shape of it right now. We're not, we're not concerned with that. Here it is. So I ask you how many boxes are in six second paper or six second strip? How many boxes? Somebody answer this one. What is the number of complexes in the above six second interval? What is the heart rate? Let's go ahead and answer that. Type in your answer in the chat. Norma, you said 30 boxes. That's correct. So what is the answer here? What is the heart rate on this strip that you're looking at? What is the heart rate? Cynthia, what is the heart rate?
I'm waiting for a response. Sir, how, do you, how did you get how did you get the 30 boxes? You count the number of large boxes from one red line. Do you see the thick red lines right here? Like this one? There's one over here, and then there's one on this side right here. They're they're marking there. That's the way the paper comes. So oh, okay. I'll say so we know that how many boxes are here to here. See, it tells you right here. There's three seconds from one red mark to the next red mark. Three seconds. And you count how many boxes. One, you said, I think someone said earlier, right? Uh, Norma said there's 30 boxes. There's 15 here, and then there's 15 here. So it's three seconds plus three seconds, this six second interval. So you 30 large boxes in a six second strip, okay? So how do you calculate the heart rate using the R to R method? What is the heart rate here? Raquel or Cynthia, please tell me the answer. I'm waiting for the answer. Cynthia, 15, Cynthia. What, 15 what? 15 boxes in, in uh, three seconds. And then 30 boxes, Norma said 30 boxes in six seconds, which is correct. How do you calculate the heart rate using a six second, oh, the, uh, the six second strip? How do you calculate that? Please tell me. We just went over it. If you don't understand, please ask. You multiply now? That's correct. So do the math, multiply it. What do you multiply? Exactly. That's correct, Cynthia. So what is the heart rate? Seventy. If that's seven seven R waves times ten, that would give you seventy. That is R to R method. Okay. So let's move on to see if we have do another one using the other methods. Okay. This is lead two. Tells you right there. Uh, Cynthia, give me the heart rate using the fifteen hundred method. And Raquel, give me the heart rate using the 300 method, right? Or R to R, R to R. I'll be waiting for the answer here. Everybody else, um, let me see here. Uh, Janie, give me the heart rate using the six second method. All right. I'm waiting for your Sir, response. Sir, I have a question on that one. Um, on the top, in the left corner, it says lead two times 1.0. Does that have anything to do with it or not? Uh, the lead two, yes. The lead two, it's telling you the view of the heart. Remember, lead two goes from, from the right to the left leg, right? That means that you're looking at the heart from the left side. You're looking up. So you're looking at this is lead one goes like this. Right, remember the electrical flow goes from here to the to this. Lead two goes from the right to the left leg. So you're over here. Okay, this is you, Janie, looking at the heart, lead two, looking at the heart this way. So what part of the heart are you looking at? The left ventricle, the left side, the bottom, a little bit, all this section. This is your what you're looking at, and that's what you're looking at in the in lead two. Okay. So if the paper said lead one, well then you'd be looking at the heart on this side. Okay, lead three, you'd be looking at the heart from this side, and so on. That's what it means. But we're going to go into that later. Okay, right now, we're calculating the heart rates. I want you to calculate it using the six second and give me your answer. Cynthia, how is the R to R method? R to R method is also called the 300 method. But to avoid confusion, or if you want to remember it that way, call it the 300 method. It's where you count the number of large boxes between two R waves, right? Cynthia uh, says 62.5, let's say 63 beats per minute. Um, for six second method, uh, Janie, you counted the number of Rs, right? For the whole six seconds. And you said it's about 60. So pretty close to what Cynthia got. We're just waiting on the 300 method. How do you count uh, the 300 method? 
you can round you can round up um cynthia uh if you want i mean it's pretty close 62 63 it's not gonna hurt anybody literally okay it's not gonna hurt to say 62 same thing raquel says it's a hundred how do you calculate the r to r or 300 you get the number of large boxes and divide them into 300 so you always try to pick the R waves that are closest to a vertical line, okay? When you're gonna do the R to R method, try to pick two lines. Like for example, the two last ones, or well not the last ones, but uh, one, two, three, the fourth and the fifth, fifth R wave, right? One of them is right on the line. It's one, two, three, four, five. So five large boxes, Raquel, into 300, what does that give you? You divide five into 300, five times six is 60. Very good. So your heart rate is about 60 using, you know, the R to R, which is not very accurate. So we said the most accurate is which one, which method? The one that Cynthia did. The 1500. That's correct. So the most accurate heart rate is 62, 63 beats per minute. That's what you're looking at right there. Okay, so again, uh, I want you to go back and I think there are some video links uh, on the website about the EKG, what it is, so you can have a better idea. Okay, so watch the video. Hopefully it makes a little bit more sense now that I've explained uh, the EKG paper, the calculating the speed, the heart rate, what the leads are. There's some videos that are very confusing and just try to avoid those. If you don't understand those videos, just disregard it. And if, but if you have questions, say, sir, well, I watched this video and I didn't understand what he was talking about. You can ask me on Friday and then we can go over it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw uh, on, the, on, the, on the board, okay, exactly what you're gonna be looking at on Friday. All right, so does anyone have any questions uh, up to this point? This, that was the end of chapter three. We're going to, um, we're going to continue uh, on to the next uh, section. There are some, uh, obviously there's some quizzes, the exam, uh, I think it should have, chapter three should be done by the end of the day today. So if you're behind, please catch up. Uh, the assignments, the terminology guys, you guys already forgot that I've asked you for the terms. If you don't understand the terms, you're not gonna understand some of the, uh, it's not gonna have meaning later on when we uh, go in, you know, into depth about the EKG. So please turn in the terms. Don't, uh, don't get lazy, do those terms, understand uh, the words that I'm saying. I know sometimes if you don't do the terms, you don't understand, but you don't ask either. So I can only assume that you understand. That's why I need you all to, to sure. do the terminology, yes. I have all the terms, but it doesn't let me send them in an email, so I'll just take them to you on Friday. Okay, perfect. Yeah, bring them in Friday, all right? Please, up to chapter three at least, because uh, the only ones that I got were last week from chapter one. I haven't seen anything for chapter two. So the assignments are on there online. And uh, the test- Yeah, it doesn't let me send them either. So I'll just take them to you on Friday. Are you do, trying to do it through, through Gmail? Yes, it doesn't let me. Okay, we'll look at that problem. Remind me on, on Friday so we can look at it and see what's going on. Yes, I, I have received um, uh, Cynthia's. She's the only one that I've uh, received. She sent it to, maybe our email is full the Gmail, but Cynthia sent it to her Yahoo. That's why we got it. Maybe the Gmail is already full. I think we might have to empty it out. Um, so that could be the problem. All right, because we received so, so many emails um, from you all and from other students. So that could be the problem. Anyways, um, go ahead and work on the exercises. Um, take a 10 minute break and then we're gonna continue to chapter four. All right, so I'm gonna do a, an introduction on chapter four. So take a 10 minute break and then we'll be right back. All right. That was the end of chapter three.